Okay, so Midmaster uh, Projectile DPS VOD review of a Scrim, no less. So, I've already watched this ahead of time. Uh, mostly because, you know, I don't have a lot of coaching experience doing this high elo. And I wanted to make sure I had things to say, and I do. Um, the too long didn't watch version of this is that, generally speaking, your mechanics on projectile is good enough. Um, in terms of like hitting, like, I don't want to say, like, obviously there's always room to improve. That's a given regardless, but it's mostly practice, practice, practice. There's no, there's not a lot of glaring flaws, especially when we're talking about Genji and Pharah. The issues I have mostly in terms of your projectile play is a lot into in your mindset, and then I'll get into that. Um, the other issue is is that your Brigida play does need a lot of work. There's there's a lot there that needs to be unpacked. Um, I'm not even. I can't even give a too long ver or a, a short version of it without being very rude about it, because <laughs> there's a lot of work on. Um, there's some, maybe some issues of tracer or something. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. I'm pretty much gonna maybe cover like the first three maps here, and. Like, the first thing I really want to cover is just in terms of your mindset and how you're playing this. Like, like, look how much damage you're taking right now. And where you're positioned. Like, another thing I want to bring up is, like, just right now, is is your... Like, you're on this scrim, and I don't know... You know, you're on this... Or I should say, you're on this team. I don't know all, all the dynamics. I'm, I know you're making a lot of the shot calling, at least in terms of compositions. You seem to have a pretty decent game sense for these things. And you seem to know how things should be run, but you yourself are not necessarily following that. In that you seem to have a very, like, carry-focused mindset of how you're playing. A lot of times, like, when you're on Farah, you're being, like, really low to the ground here. You're being very aggressive. You're running this ball comp, right? Like, you have Ball, you have Sombra, uh, you have a Moira, I don't remember everything. And you're just plowing right into them. And it's like, is that how this composition works? Is it really how it works? Isn't it more Ball pushes through? Um, you know, he's, he's what he can do is limited to how much damage you're taking. Like, he might have to retreat right away. He might be able to stay in a little longer. He's doing Ball things. He's mostly a distraction. Maybe he does some diving. You are shelling out damage from afar to facilitate the rest of your team to get picks. You are mostly a target caller in that whenever you get a direct hit or you get someone low, you tell your rest of the team to follow through with it because they are faster and more agile and can get to it. Whether it's Ball, whether it's Somber, whether it's Tracer, whether it's, like whoever the hell it is. But instead of doing that, you have decided to basically jump right into the fray, be super aggressive, and plow right into them. Now, Maybe this is a strategy, like, be really aggressive in the first fight, um, throw him off guard, ball runs right in, you just full commit to it, maybe there's something to it, but, you know, when I look at this, and I see how you're playing, like, you take a shitload of damage here. Mercy's healing you, you do have pocket mercy. But, the problem with this, and how it kind of plays into future team fights, and just the general style of play, is that Mercy is healing you a lot, she's not damage boosting you as much as she could be. And worse yet, if Mercy needs to do something else, like other people on the team are critical, you're basically forcing her to save you or save them. And that's not a good position. Like, you still need to mitigate damage even if you have a Mercy pocket. And you're not doing that. You're going right in to, like, Winston range. Do you need to be this close? Like, you have... You have a dildo in the middle of the point. Like, I guess that's not a good point as well. You have this giant pillar in the middle of the point that you could be using for cover. Like, I get that by being closer, you are more accurate with rockets. But that's what I'm talking about by having my carry focus. Like, do you need to be more accurate with rockets? Can you not just shell damage from afar? Still do damage because your, your aim's not bad, your mechanics are not bad. Um, get closer makes it easier, but, like, look at this. You're dueling a Genji now because you're right here on top of them. You could be far away, like, right on the... Basically, the opposite side of the dildo, picking out, still shelling into this area from afar when they come in, hitting them with rockets. Your Sombra can be behind them. Like, I actually have... I have the handy-dandy tool here. Like, 
this is the death area, right? Like, as soon as they come in, they die. Sombra can be over here, hidden. As soon as you get a hit, you tell it, you call it out, Sombra kills them. Ball is playing through. He's probably getting whatever health halfbacks there are. He's coming through in other ways. Like, that's how this is played. Now, maybe they're going to rush through, and it could cause problems, but if you're holding the point, it doesn't, like, if they rush through, more likely they're just going to get themselves screwed over. Because, like, what even is their composition that, that makes this matter? You know, what... Like, you can play... Once you have the point, you can kind of play slow and let them come to you and have to deal with them. But when you play this aggressively, you're kind of giving them opportunities to kill you. Like, look at this. Zen, Zen kills you. Now, like, that's, that's like another issue, is like, okay, so you're a projectile player, right? What is the advantage of being close to someone versus far away from someone as Pharaoh? Well, if you're closer, your projectiles will land sooner, and you will generally be more accurate with them the closer you are. There's no guarantees that you'll hit them, but you'll be more accurate and more likely to hit them sooner. This is extremely useful for dealing with, like, a McCree or a soldier or a Widowmaker, because hit scan advantage is, is that their bullets are instant so if you're far away from them they will hit you immediately your rockets will have a longer travel time and are more likely to miss so a well a moodle maker can just shoot you instantly but even a mccree could you know two tap you or three shot you before your first rocket even lands especially with the new patch coming out where he fires faster so if you're dealing with hit scan you want to be like right on top of them. Then there is an advantage to doing that. But right now, they don't have any hit scan as far as I know. They, they do get a McCree, but I believe Ball keeps them busy like this entire fight. <laughs> or like, this entire match. So, like McCree is never a problem for you. It's like, it's things like the Genji that ends up killing you. It's things like Zen that ends up killing you. So now the question is, is what is the advantage of being on top of them? Because they are projectile as well. So now the question is, is what advantage do you have by being on top of them? They have the exact same advantage when you're close. You've made it... For as much as you've made it easier to hit them, they have made it easier to hit you. And... Th like, the nature of, like, DPS, especially on, like, attack versus defense, is that... W and, and King of the Hill is a little weird, but technically you are defending right now. You have the points, so you're defending. You want to make sure you live. It's job one. Stay alive. You don't need to kill them, because you just need to hold the point. You only need them all dead once you have 199%, and it's an overtime. So, taking risks to, to duel a Zen, like, okay, yeah, you probably should have just been able to kill him. I guess, get good scrub. But the reality is, is that you need to take that fight in the first place. Because you have the point, you have a dildo to hide behind to be safe, you can keep peeking that, you're in so little danger just holding the point, but instead you want to carry and kill the Zen by yourself. And you, eat a, you end up getting out dueled because you don't really have an advantage in that fight. The, the, the fight is not advantageous to get close to him. You're better off having the dildo being at range because, again, you have splash damage. So the thing to consider is, is that when you're fighting like a Zen and it's projectile versus projectile, or a, or a Genji, it's projectile versus projectile, like, because you can splash damage to the ground, you still have an advantage at farther range because if you miss, you still hit. If he misses, he hits nothing. It doesn't matter. Right? So why take these engagements when you're holding a point that all you need to do is just hold until it gets to 99? You don't need to kill anyone to win this game. You just need to hold the point. So why are we taking this duel? Why, why do we always position up here, honestly? Again, like, okay, now we have a good view of it. Like, if you're over here, again, let's, because I have it. If you're back here, like, and, and they're coming through here, like, you have a lot of cover here. You have your your little rocket boost, or your, um, oh, I'm laying on the name of it, your uh, concussion, you have your concussion missile to boop you away if you get pushed. When you're standing right here, you have, I mean, you could drop down, yes, but you could drop down over here, too. You still have this for cover. You have the dildo for cover. You have this room you can hide into. You can go back behind into, like, closer to your spawn. There's a health pack even there. Like, where is your fallback position here? Because odds are 
you hit this wall with your concussion, which just pushes you farther this way, but you're not actually away from anything because this is where the enemy is and they can still see you over here. You can't get to the mega that's all the way over there. It's too far away. This, this cover, like, it's aggressive positioning to kill these people. You have good sight lines to kill them, yes. But you are defending. They don't have the point. They need the point. You don't need to kill them to hold the point. And in fact, at this point, you've lost people, and this is a lost fight anyway. So you just want to stall. And stalling is not... He this is not stall position. This is kill them position. And I have this... This is I've, this is the first time I've used this, by the way, in case you can't tell. <laughs> so I'm playing with it. But this is this is not a stall position. This is a I want to kill them and carry position. And I, I keep bringing this up because this is a common theme with how you play. You're trying to just win the fight, and you can't because again, Jesus is going to fuck you up. Divas is going to mess you up. And like right here, I think I think that is you saying like this comp is about diving on things and working together, but you're the one who's supposed to kind of be shot calling this with your rockets. Like, it's kind of your department, and you don't have to follow up on it, but you're not playing in a way that f that actually makes this possible, because you're playing so aggressively that you're putting yourself in too much peril, and you're just trying to kill them yourself. And yeah, that was like the best chance they had at like, defending this for a long time, because your, your ball is actually doing a lot of good work here. Um... And, and and what's funny is you're not necessarily even, like, losing because of how you're playing. Because, again, it's it's not like it's bad. In fact, this is actually where you lose this round. And it's not your fault. Well, it actually, it's partially your fault. You have the good idea. So you have Barrage. You want to use it when they come in. Sombra's like, I have EMP. Let's EMP Barrage. Brilliant. Except Sombra fucks it up. Unlucky. Like, you have it coming in the door... Sombra's not here. I don't know where the hell Sombra is. Yeah, like, you're playing it out right now. EMP Barrage, great. Winston comes in. I think EMP is on point and only gets Winston. Baffling. I, I don't know why EMP to sell that Winston. Huge mistake. But here's the problem. You follow up with your own Barrage anyway. Like, I'm, I guess I'll still Barrage. Because, again, I have to carry, right? But, again, you're defending. You're, you're still defending. And you have barraged into, like, five people. Which had trance, which has a Genji, which has a Diva. Even if they didn't trance this, like, they actually wasted trance. They blew trance. They didn't need the trance here. They should already know that you have Barrage. They should have seen you up there. Because, again, your positioning is so aggressive that it's basically telling you, the enemy team, I have Barrage. I, I feel like even if you hadn't had Barrage, you'd still be there. <laughs> But if I saw a fair up there, I would assume that she has barrage and she's gonna barrage us when we come to the, the the archway. That's the obvious thing you're going to do. And you've telegraphed it by showing them you're gonna be over here. If you were far away, they are not gonna assume you have barrage. Or that you're at least not intending to use it. But you've telegraphed this. They actually did not need the transcendence. This diva could have just instantly deleted you if she wanted to by just boosting straight into you if she was prepared for it. This is them being bad and not you being good, because you've telegraphed too much. And worse yet, because you know, Sombra fucked up the EMP, but you basically doubled down on the fuck up by barraging into four people who could easily stop you. They waste transcendence here. They didn't need it. You were dead. Like, they even have an Ana. Like, you could have slept immediately. Like, you, you were so fucked there. I can't even put it into words. They just blew transcendence for no reason. And... This is a kind of another issue of your barrages, and that's like, I get that you wanted to, to kind of like you had the EMP and the EMP got fucked up, and maybe you, were well, like I was, you were already mentally set to barrage. Kind of assuming the EMP wasn't gonna get botched, but, you know, maybe that extra hesitation was necessary to realize that no, this isn't gonna work out. But even like later barrages, and I don't know if I'm actually gonna get to that map, because I'm, I'm thinking kind of new bunny, but. Like, Barrage is, a, is an ultimate that is going to get you killed more often than not. And sure, if you get a trade, it's like, it can be worth it. But it depends on who you're trading with. And especially now that we're getting into, like, Master and GM, even if you get two, like, if, if you're in a, if you get, like, a Reinhardt and a Zenyatta, brilliant, right? You die. But you've got the main tank and the Zenyatta, like, you win, right? Oh, wait a minute, they have Grab Dragons. 
you still lose. They have Nano Blade, you still lose. Like, even even getting two doesn't matter if you didn't actually delete the win condition. Like, trading, especially if we're talking, like, competitive, because this, I, don't, I don't think I've said this before, but you, you give me a scrim VOD, that's fine, because there's a lot to look at and a lot to work with, and it gives me a lot to kind of see um, patterns, and this is why I, I'm kind of hammering around, like, um, playing aggressively, because I think this is, like, a big thing you do throughout. Um, but... Like, competitive is a different beast, because you at least have an organized team you can fall back on. This is, like, why you would not want to play aggressively here, because that's not how this comp really should be played. And you have a team that you should be pretty reliable to follow through with your rockets and your comms. Ideally. So, playing, like, trying to play carry isn't really good here. Now, in competitive, it might be better, because you don't know if your team is going to be potatoes. You don't even know if you're going to have a decent comp. There's a lot of... Uh, Competitive is a fucking mess, and sometimes you do need to carry, and that's probably how you got to master, which is by hard carrying as a DPS player. But the higher in comp you go, the more likely your team is not potatoes, or at the very least knows strategy and usually picks up what you're, you know, like supports are more reliable, main tanks are more reliable. Um, the team might not be a cohesive unit, but usually people know what the job is they're supposed to be doing and usually can at least do it adequately. So it does become increasingly more important to play as a team, even in competitive. And sometimes you still have to carry because sometimes you get one-tricks and, and stupid shit happens and you don't have a main healer. And you don't know what that's going to bring. So there, there is there is some thing to it. But overall, getting kind of away from this carry mindset, because it's, it's going to cause you to make a lot of mistakes that are unnecessary, especially when we're talking about, like, I, I could never stress enough how important it is to understand the difference between being on offense and being on defense in terms of how you should play as a DPS, because you just don't want to die. Like, I always view any kind of DPS encounter I take as a percentage chance to win. So we're talking about, like, when you're when you're in a position where you're basically dueling a Genji as Pharah, like, what is the odds you kill Genji and what's the odds Genji kills you? Like, just the thing about this. Like, you play Genji too, so you should have a pretty good idea of how this matchup plays out. Farah is going to have difficulty getting any kind of indirects on him, because he's usually jumping in the air. Even if you go get directs on someone who is midair, and also he's like has this weird jump thing that could kind of throw off your aim. It's not necessarily super easy to predict. But even if you get a good direct while he's midair, he could just easily reflect it. So Farah is going to have a lot of trouble getting any kind of real damage into him. And even if you get one direct on him, he has the option to always dash away to safety. Or if he gets better hits on you with shurikens, and he's you're going to be easier to hit too because again, like your hitbox is much larger. Genji's going to fire. You know, he's getting all these shurikens that you know they have. Either he can right click if you're really close, or even the left click has. You know, they fire one at a time. So there's I don't want to say a spread, but if he's kind of like waving his mouse around in your general direction. A few of them might hit you, a couple could hit you in the head, things of that nature. Like, he has a lot more give, you, your hitbox is larger, there's a very good chance that he does more damage to you, and then he does like a dash right in your face, right clicks you, and you just get deleted. Like, the odds of you winning that fight are very poor for Farah. so why would you ever want to get close to him? Why would you ever want to be on that, like, that left side with the high ground? Because Genji wants to be up there, you don't want to fight Genji. When you already have the point, what possible good would be getting into anything involving Genji, especially when you have a team comp that has nothing to fear from Genji? You have a you have like a Moira, you, Mercy's on pocketing you, like you have Sombra, like Genji ain't doing shit. If he does, if he gets Blade, he might do something, maybe. But again, you have like a Moira, you have a bunch of people who can actually kind of evade Blade pretty well, even if you don't have a support ultimate that's negated, you you just evade it pretty well. So, like, at most, you're just feeding him Blade, and that's a win condition for them. Blade gets them a win. Like, play defensively. Don't take duels that can get you into trouble. And where this gets even worse is when we're talking about Brigida. And, like, I have to keep pausing it, because, like, Brigida now is an entire speech. Because you fundamentally do not play Brigida correctly. Um, one in part is because of this aggression and this, and this carry mindset, because Brigida is not a DPS. Like, like there, there's there's several things at play. Like, for one, there is like form Brigida, 
as we'll call her, where people kind of think that Brigitte is kind of immortal, that she can just, like, tank three people. And these instances happen, <laughs> because Brigitte is kind of stupid. But you have to kind of understand when that works and why it works. And I, I think if I was to describe how Brigitte, like, plays and what she is, is, like, she is, like, if Reinhardt and Zarya had a baby that was adopted by D.Va and taught her how to play. Because while she does have Zarya and, and Zarya, because of her um, repair pack, is similar to Projected Bubble and how it operates. And Reinhardt, for obvious reasons. D.Va, though, is kind of the most, like, the closest other hero that she plays like, but she has no boosters. And that really limits, like, it really makes it significantly more dangerous in terms of what you can do with her but she still plays in a similar mindset of being a protector and being kind of a bully. I always like to refer to D.Va as a bully, and Brigitte also is a bully. But the thing about bullies is that if you stand up to them and punch them in the face, they tend to crumple. So while they are mean, and they could definitely wreck some shit, if someone stands up to you, you're going to get decimated. And, if, and like, like you don't take a fair fight as Brig or D.Va. You take unfair fights and you pummel them. You pick on the nerds, you don't pick on the jocks. It's very simple. So, like, first question I have, do you know what counters Brigitte? Um, I, you pro I, I always liked... I, when, when she came out, no one knew what countered Brigitte. And I think this is still a valid question. What counters Brigitte? Is it, like, the biggest counter? I, was when I'm, I went with the one singular hero that Brigitte should be the most afraid of. Is it Farah? Most people who don't know what the hell they're talking about will probably say Farrah. The answer is Reinhardt. Reinhardt is your biggest counter as Brigitte. What heroes and goats? What hero frontlines and goats? So, what hero do you not want to be in front of and, and be on the wrong, you know, end of? You don't want to be near Reinhardt. This is kind of strange because you think you're supposed to you're a melee character like right here what the hell are you doing like i know i'm kind of being mean here but this is like i feel like i have to like you're basically now challenging reinhardt to a duel your team has gone to the left and this is like a miscommunication issue these things can happen but the, the thing is is that you have taken again an aggressive mindset of i'm just going to go in and start swinging but you are swinging on your biggest counter reinhardt's gonna fuck your shit in this is even getting into the fact that they also have a Reaper and all this other shit. Reinhardt out damages you. He outguns you. He out heals you. He has everything at an advantage against you. Yes, you can bully him. You can shield bash him. You can whip shot him. You can make him really angry. Don't piss off the guy who's going to kick your ass in a fight. You don't play Brigida aggressively. The, another way I would describe of how to play Brigida is a wise old ninja. Not the Genji young upstart ninja, but the wise old sensei that when the uh, hundred enemy ninjas all surround him, he just sort of stands there, waits patiently for one of them to make a move, and then he wrecks their shit. As Brigitte, you play defensively so that when their Ryan comes in at you, you're able to then intercept the Ryan, bash him, whipshot him, do whatever, and then immediately back off. You don't go straight at him. Because what's going to happen, and it doesn't necessarily happen here because they have a Reaper, they're not necessarily playing Goats, they're not playing the same game you are, but th the concept still stands is Reinhardt's going to beat the shit out of you. And this is another issue of how Goats functions. See, the, the purpose of Goats is that you have a ton of health and you have a ton of healing. But at the same time, you actually, like the new version of Goats, I don't want to say new, actually new, it's, it's months old, but the Zen version of Goats, the common version of Goats, actually does not have that much healing. But it does have a lot of saves, the same way that Goats always has. So, like, it's, it's like, to, the, the original Goats was Moira. So, the issue of, like, how Goats couldn't be beaten is, like, okay, kill the main healer, right? Kill the main healer, the team falls apart. Kill Moira. Okay, as soon as you almost kill Moira, she fades. Okay, kill her again. Oh, wait, she got a repair pack. Okay, kill her again. Oh, wait, she got a projected bubble. Okay, kill her again. Oh, wait, no, she has fade again. It's impossible to kill her. The goat still functions the same way. It's just that you don't have a Moira now, you have a Zen, and you are a little bit more fragile, but you do more damage. And it was ultimately decided that doing more damage is more useful than being uh, 
harder to kill just because of like the changing meta of uh, its functions. Blah 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 blah. Point is though, is that as Brigida, like you save people, but who is going to save you? Right? You get into trouble. What is your escape? Who's going to save you? Once Reinhardt's on top of you, how do you get out? Like you could bash away, sure, but they have a Lucio who can speed boost. He's going to keep following you. You're already almost dead. In fact, you might have to turn your back or turn around and put up your shield because you might have a Discord over at this point and Zen's now shooting you. Like, once you get into trouble, you are fucked. At best, you can get a projected bubble, but Zarya is looking to put projected bubble on Reinhardt and may have already done so and doesn't have it. You can't repair pack yourself. You cannot save yourself. You are someone who saves other people. So that when you get to the shit, you're just going to die. Like, Brigida might be the reason why GOATS exists and might be, like, the like most influential and important character, but she is easily the weakest link of GOATS. If you die, not only does the team fall apart, but, like, you're the easiest person to kill. Because once you get out of position, you're fucking toast. Shield Bash can kind of get you out of trouble, but it, it has its limits. And if you're frontlining, you're fucking dead. Even in terms of, like, if, if Reinhardt wasn't off to the side and he was right next to you and you two were together, Reinhardt's hammer cleaves. Like, he's going to hit both of you. Your DPS is insignificant to what Reinhardt's putting out. He's cleaving you for 75 a shot. Who's going to heal you? You have Lucia who AoE heals. You have your AoE who Inspire heal. Zen needs to put his orb on Reinhardt, and he could switch to you, but now Reinhardt's going to suffer for it. Like, you can't take unnecessary damage by getting your ass pushed in by Reinhardt by, with his cleaves. And this is a common problem. Like, yeah, you escape, but now you just wasted bash. You wasted bash to escape. Reaper's now here, and you don't have bash for him. Like... This is a huge issue. Now, like, Reiner, blah, 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 everything goes to shit. Um, sure, like, the May walled him off and you were pretty much toast, but, like, you needed to be able to kill Reaper there. And you probably could have if you had Bash, but you used it to, get, to not die because you were basically feeding. Um, this entire thing is, like, a common problem throughout your ready to play. Um, it's just like a fundamental, like, now you're frontlining again, everyone's, it's fine, you're getting the stack, but like, you're in front of Reinhardt, like, you're about to engage, you're in front of Reinhardt. You almost get walled off because you're in front of Reinhardt. Reinhardt wasn't on top of the wall, you were. Then you need a flame strike. Like, you're, you're playing right next to Reinhardt. You don't play next to him, you play behind him. Because when you're behind him, you know, when he starts getting in trouble and starts backing up, that's when you can move in to help him. You know, you're waiting for the enemy Reinhardt to make a move before you make your move. You basically always want, like, yeah, you want to be putting in damage as much as you can. Like, I, I don't want to give the impression that you should just be standing there doing nothing. But you need to exercise extreme caution in anything you do, because if you get caught out, you're fucking dead. You don't want to be taking in unnecessary damage. You don't want to be in front of everybody. Like, this is a common, common problem. Um, and, yeah, you don't get punished as nearly as much as you should <laughs> for it some of the time. But it's it's definitely an issue. And, yeah, you want to be getting your melee shots in when you can. And this is just a matter of getting the feel for the fight and realizing, you know, like, y you know when you have the advantage. If their enemy Ryan is hard shielding, because... Because, like, what you want is, if they're playing really aggressive, you have to, like, match their aggression. But you, you need to do it in an intelligent way. So, as long as you're not standing right next to Reinhardt immediately, you suss out the fight. If the Reinhardt starts pushing in and being very aggressive, you know you can shield bash, you know you can whip shot, you can start being a little bit more aggressive yourself, but at the same time, maintaining a distance. Because Reinhardt can't just plow through your Reinhardt, right? Like, you just can't do that without getting killed. So, as long as you're maintaining kind of a safe distance, using range, and just playing within that, like, perfect space of, like, moving in, getting a hit, kind of backing up, before you know you can full commit. Because there's a certain point where then, where if the enemy Reinhardt starts hard shielding because he's gone too far and he wants to back up, then you can start playing a lot more aggressively. But at the same time, always maintaining a certain amount of distance, because 
this can get you in trouble because again you feel like oh i have the opportunity i'm gonna go push in as hard as i can you may quickly find that you are out in narnia and you're dead because there's no way to get out once you're in you just cannot hard carry as Brigida. And, and when you talk about, like, why is it that Brigida can do, like, feel like she could just conquer the world sometimes? It's actually a very simple explanation because it's like, it takes a lot of resources to kill Brigida in a lot of normal situations. Like, if you're 1v1ing a Hanzo, and you're, just, you're basically just holding shield and walking up to him, what does Hanzo need to do to kill you? He needs to burn Storm Arrow to break down your shield. He needs to probably use Leap to get more distance. He needs to burn every single cooldown he has just to have the chance to shoot you in the head and kill you. And if he doesn't get the headshot, you win. He needs to one-shot you at point-blank range to kill you. It's not a fair fight. And if he doesn't have any of his cooldowns, he's fucking dead anyway. Like... That's why Brigitte is so good, <laughs> and this is true of pretty much any other DPS too. Like, they need to blow everything to have a fair chance of fighting Brigitte, and even then, that's just a fair chance. And if you're playing Brigitte smart, you don't give them a fair chance. You only go on them when you know you can kill them without them having a chance. And that's against DPS, but the motion of stance. And then when there's like a 3v3 kind of situation where people are down and it's really messy, that's where Brigida becomes more powerful because she gets way more, because there's just less resources on the enemy team that can counter you, that can deal with you, and so you, you become stronger by by there being not enough people to focus you because the, the, the other weakness of Brigida is just everyone turning to Brigida and killing her. That's how you kill Brigida. The easiest way. Everyone shoot her. There, she's dead. And you know, I like to also say that Brigida has a global taunt because everyone wants her dead. And this is another issue of, like, if you give them the opportunity, they will definitely take it. There's no leeway here. They're not going to give you a pass because, no. <laughs> like, they're going to take, extra they're just immediately going to take advantage of any mistake you make because everyone's looking to kill Brigida. And again, she's the weak leak of goats. Very, very critical. And this is, okay, like, again... Why are you moving forward here? Like, you have the sight line on Anna. Why are we moving forward? Like, by getting closer did not help you kill Anna. <laughs> right? Like, it didn't matter. You got the kill on her, but you could have done that at a distance. She fucked up because she just got, I don't know, stupid. <laughs> I guess. I don't know why she didn't evade your rockets. She easily could have at, at either distance. And now that you're in the shit... I actually, I'm, I'm so shocked that you actually survived this. I thought for sure you were dead here. But, um, like, okay, it's fine. Because your team, like, you, you Anna, keep, like, your mercy keeps you alive. She died for it. Like, you didn't need to go in there. And, okay, yeah, you're, you're taking the point. And, like, you can say that at that point, a certain amount of risk is advisable because you're essentially on attack. You're not defending. But right there... Like, do you even know what the enemy team is running at that point? You know they have Ana. <laughs> like, are you sure that you're not going to walk into some shit? Um, because it's another thing. I, I notice you don't pit tab a lot. And, um... I don't know. Maybe maybe you've kind of gotten to the past the point of needing to. But I always like to hit tab basically anytime I die. To kind of get a good sense of what I want to do next fight. In terms of ultimates. Especially in, like, something like competitive. Like, you are in a team game... If you're not the shot caller in, in between fights, it's not necessarily as important to, like, look at ult and stuff. But, I mean, you do kind of do a lot of shot calling, though. At least in terms of team comps. Um, again, you seem to have a pretty good grasp for a lot of the meta stuff. But, I, I feel like there could be a benefit of, like, when you dive, just, like, look at tab. Hit tab and be like, okay, what do I need to be worried about? Like, who do I need to focus? What do I need to be worried about? What ults do we have? What ults do they, could they have? Um, it's going to be super useful and competitive. Maybe because this is a scram, you're not too worried about it, but I, I feel like you should be hitting tab a lot more. Just to be thinking about these things. Um, I want to say this is fine, but again, you could easily get caught out here because your whole team's over here and you're over here by yourself. Um, but it's fine. It's somewhat risky just because no one's with you. But, you know, okay, it's good. And there's also some other things of like, like right here, where you, <laughs> you're chasing Genji and he gets the drop on you. Um, 
I, I, you actually this happens a second time, but you actually see it coming that time, so you, you learn from it. And like you know, trust the audio cues. You know, he didn't dash away, and he couldn't have run that fast, so he had to be hiding. Uh, kudos for that Genji, though. That's that's still a pretty slick move to uh, <laughs> climb up the wall and get the drop on you like that. It's it's a pretty good move. I mean, I can't complain about the aggression there. Like, you're just trying to hold the point. It's fine. No. They're down three. Are you leaving? Like, like, maybe you could do it safer, but at that point, they have a diva, so there's no safe position. She's going to boost into you and kill you anyway. I think that's. Yeah, that's it for this. So, um. What's the next one? Was it New Bonnie? Or was it... No, it was Velskaya. Okay, so... We're going left. We got, we got Genji now. And... Once again, like... Your mechanics on this character are pretty decent here. Like, I mean, they're all shooting into you. You get ult pretty fast here. It's solid. But once again, there's some aggression issues. Namely here. Like, I don't get this dash. Um, like, okay, like, here's the thing. Look at the kill feed. Like, let's, let's focus up here on the kill feed. So, you die first. And then your main tank dies. You died first, though. Now, because your main tank, I guess, fed. I don't know. Actually, I don't know how they killed both. I guess the Bastion just killed him by himself. I don't know how the hell that happened. <laughs> I don't know how Winston managed to kill himself when most of the enemy team is focused on you, but somehow he managed to do it. But the thing is, if he hadn't done that, you would have just killed yourself for no reason. Because you still die either way. Because the main tank fed, it works out because you just dashed into him, got a bunch of ult charge, now you're at 71%. That's pretty good for one fight. You almost have ult. And blade is basically your win condition, so great. Except, why'd you dash into him that quickly when you could have kept poking him in your position? You know, if, if Winston had not fed for no reason, you could have poked, maybe dashed later once you, you know, dive onto them, as you kind of attempted to do, or at least wanted to do when they were over on the left. There is no real need to... Like, it's so risky to do. And yeah, okay, again, attack, you could be riskier, but... I mean, did you really think you were going to survive that? Like, did you think you were going to make it to the Mega? There's no way. <laughs> There's no way. They have a, they have a Symmetra. She's going to beam you. You can't deflect that. They have an Orisa who can pull you. Like, I'm kind of surprised she didn't. I guess she may have already used it. Like, it's just... It's, I, I, it's just so risky. Because once, once the Winston fed, though, see, if you just hesitated, throw him some left clicks at him. Which maybe if you had done that, the Winston wouldn't have died because maybe Bastion turns to you, which again you can just reflect. So you're fine. You can dash away if you need to. If Winston feeds anyway, then you dash in and, su and suicide and still get your alt charge. Like, there's just no reason to, to do what you did. It was just needlessly aggressive. Needlessly aggressive. Also, don't deflect a symmetric turn. <laughs> just, you know, doesn't work. Okay, so this is, okay, I think it's coming up right here. So, I, you're going to blade here. And I have the volume down, I don't know how well you can hear it. Um, but I want you to figure out why this blade doesn't work. Like, just, you have blade. Why doesn't this blade work? It's Baptiste. Okay, mm you got the Baptiste. And, uh, that's all you get. Mercy reses the Baptiste. You lose the fight. So, why did that fight, why'd you lose, why, why did that not go well? And, if you could hear it, the comms were mercy, 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 mercy. Now, okay. The obvious answer would be you didn't kill the mercy. 
And while technically true, that is not the correct answer. Let's see if I can actually back this up. This video is so long it's actually hard to like skip around accurately. A little too far. Okay, so like the actual issue here is that you're okay, I'm gonna do it. I have blade. And we push Q without any real idea where the fuck the enemy team is. Like, your vision here is piss poor. Like, you basically just dash right up up in this corner. And you basically just have a general idea that they are here. This is where this is where the enemy is. You have no idea where Mercy is, right? If you had looked back, you can actually see in the chaos that Mercy has gone to the left. Like, I think they symmetrid over to the left, and Mercy had... I, think she, I don't think she even took the teleporter. She just guardian angel that way and I don't blame you for not seeing it because I believe there's like explosions and shit that were like there was a lot going on to not see it and your team could have told you where mercy went they could have actually gave a positional call out they just said mercy 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 but my complaint here is that you basically blade without vision you have no idea where the team is and you just immediately pull out blade um, it's not necessarily an aggressive issue, maybe an eagerness issue. Like, your win condition for this match is Blade, right? Ideally Nano Blade, but you've got Blade so quickly that you're not going to get Nano, and without Nano, you can still win that. Like, it's not because you didn't have Nano, that's not what, it doesn't matter. You got the Baptiste, you could have gotten Mercy if you knew where she was. But the issue of not knowing where Mercy is isn't that... They, you, I mean, you could blame the team for not giving a better call out of where she went, but it's still kind of on you to pull out Blade when you didn't really get a good look at what the team was doing. And I think actually you did EMP Blade, but the, once again the EMP I think missed most of the enemy team, unfortunate. I think it's because they already teleported away, or were already moving over to the left. And it's it's just a matter of like, get a bet like get get up here on this middle area. Get a view of the map. You know, you dash... See, like, when Genji dashes up to get Nano, it's not just to get Nano. It's not just for Liana to get clear line of sight. It's also for Genji to be able to see the entire field, or more or less, see where the enemy is, and then, like, immediately come up with a battle plan of who you're going to dash, who you're going to blade, where you go from the first guy, next guy, next guy, next guy. You couldn't do that where you bladed. And this is somewhat of a minor nitpick, and it's not something you ever do again. But it's definitely something to keep in mind that if if blade is a, a you know such an important part of your win condition, make sure you can get a good blade. Because Genji is very much like you're your ult. Like it's second best offensive ultimate outside of EMP. Like again, Somber should be making sure your EMPs are solid too. But we're not vod reviewing Somber right now. <laughs> we're not reviewing you. Like your EMPs could be better, but. That, in that instance, your blade could have been better because you could have had better positional awareness of what the enemy team was doing. And where you were standing and where you bladed, you couldn't do that. So, you know blade's coming. Get in that position ahead of time. Um, I mean, there was this thing where it's like EMP's coming out, you didn't really have time to reposition, but, you know, foresight. You know, bl you know you're going to blade. You basically already had that in your head that you were going to do it. And this is like, this is some clutch play by Ana. Nanoing you, getting you the blade, and now you just do it. And again, this time you have, you know where the enemy's at. <laughs> and then Mercy kind of comes right where you're at to kind of give you that nice free slash on her. And then, yeah, you blade carries. But, like, you're actually doing really good as Genji. Like, I, that's, that's like the nitpick I have. <laughs> because a lot of the shit you're doing is actually pretty good. It's just, um... You don't want to fuck up Blade. Like, there's already issues of, like, the team could beat your Blade with things like Beat and Transcendence, which they don't have in this case, but you can get slept, and they don't have it in this case, but um, there's already too many things that could beat Blade by them outplaying you. And there's not too much, I mean, there's not much you can do to prevent things like that. Um, that's on them to, to kind of pull this stuff off. And you don't want to fuck up Blade when it's, like, they don't have that shit. Like, that's your win condition. Like, that's very, very important. It's one of those things where, um, it's it's funny, like, gold players, you know, I'm coaching gold all the time on Saturdays, and frequently it's like, use your alts quicker, 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 speed, speed, speed. And, you know, I watch this and I think, 
you know what? Hesitate a little. <laughs> Your Sombra could use the hesitate a little. Like, speed is kind of a detriment if you're being sloppy about it. Don't be sloppy. You know, it could, it could take a half second to not be sloppy. Take the half second. Um, foresight. Foresight's hugely important. Because uh, you just, you don't want to waste this shit. And this, it's, it, I think it's the next one. Never mind, I think it's the next one. Um, that's just unfortunate. Um, I guess you should have heard him, but it's unfortunate. Um, the other thing I will say about Brig, just because I'm thinking about it right now, um, some one of the things you t to get like better mechanics on Brig. Um, okay, just actually, I think you do know this one, but just to be clear, you have the combo right, the um, bash melee cancel to whip shot, um, and then you have bash whip shot. Um, just to be clear, like, the difference is, is that, you know, you put the extra melee in, it gets, does more damage. If you don't put the extra melee in and you just whip shot, they get launched farther. I feel like you know that, but there were times where, I, like, you didn't use it. I, I remember, I think it was Lijong Tower. I noticed times where it felt like I wasn't quite sure why you weren't putting the melee in. I don't know if you screwed it up or what. Um, it seemed a little sloppy. Um, the other thing I want to mention with Brigida, and this is something I do notice several times is so you should on you, you you play genji so you you have a good understanding of the value of a good melee finisher right you know if someone gets really low hit them with a melee get so many kills that way um, it's really important for genji it's, a lot of, it's really important for lots of characters to get that extra melee in right at the end is a finishing move because it's faster than frequently just getting another shot in even though brigida is all melee she still has a finishing move and whip shot and it does 75 damage instead of 30. So at any given time, you can you, you're just meleeing hit someone. Understand that if you get them below 75, you kill them instantly with a whip shot. There are several times throughout this scrim where, I mean, I don't remember specific instances we might see one here or not, but there were times where like you're you're getting into a good you know you're just beating the shit out of Anna. She's in a then that range of like she's around 75, and you don't throw the whip shot out at her. And she actually, and the one time, I'm, th I'm not sure what map it was, but I know there's one time in particular, she survives because of that. She gets healed by someone. You could have killed her right there, and I think you even lose that fight. And it's like, it might have actually been on the on the first map. It might have been on um, the one we already saw, and I just kind of forgot about it. But um, she survives the fight, and you lose that fight because of that. Or at least partially. I mean, you might have lost it anyway, because it was, it was a pretty rough fight, if I recall. But, I mean, if you had killed Viana, that's a huge game-changer. So it's like, you do have a melee finisher, and it's whip shot, and um, you do miss a lot of whip shots, and it's important to keep in mind that, like, whip shot, you don't want to miss whip shot. <laughs> like, you do, you want to have the confidence to use it when you need it, but you don't want to miss with it. So, I, I don't know if there's, like, a good way to practice it. Just get comfortable using it, especially when you're point-blank range as a finishing move. Be careful about using it at extreme long ranges, because if you miss, it's a long time to be without a shield. Um, especially if you're fighting DPS comps. You know, you don't want to be without a shield over when they have a Hanzo. Because one headshot, you're dead. Um, and goats, you can get away with it. I mean, you do want to be whip shining people when you're playing goats to get Inspire triggered. Because again, you don't want to be right next to Reinhardt to try and be triggering it a lot of time. You just whip shot at a distance. You do want to Inspire up as much as possible in goats. Actually, outside, like, if you're not fighting goats, like, when I played Brigida, this was kind of, I wasn't pre-goats, goats existed, but it wasn't, like, super common in comp yet, um, so I was mostly playing as off-support, I would rarely try and trigger Inspire when I was playing her, her as just a pure off-support in 2-2-2, because it was just too dangerous, because it was just too much of a risk that if I try and whipshot someone at far range, I'd get deleted by DPS. Um, in goats, you're a lot safer, because you're just playing behind Reinhardt's shield a lot of time, so, just be aware that, like, it makes you vulnerable, but if you're behind Reinhardt's shield, you're pretty safe. Um, if you're at point-blank range, you're pretty safe, because you shouldn't miss at that range. Again, your mechanics are fine. I, I think it just might be you don't play as much Brigida outside of Goats and outside of Scrims to maybe have that confidence. But, I mean, your mechanics should be good enough to be, you can pull off a lot of whip shots. Um, maybe just, I don't know. I, I don't know how, to, how you, like, practice it in any way. And if you really need to, I, it may just be a confidence issue and a, a mindset issue of just 
being more comfortable just using that ability in, in the ways it needs to be used because it is extremely powerful. It, it is your burst damage and it does do quite a lot of damage. Somewhat risky at range, but as a finisher, extremely powerful. And I'm losing my pause because I want to talk about this. What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> what are you doing here? What is this? Like, I think you want to kill... You see that Hanzo, and I'm like, I'm going to kill that Hanzo. And he just leaps away. Reaper's up here for some reason. You're running goats. You're the main healer of goats as Brigida. You really are. If if Zen didn't have Transcendence, she'd probably have gold healing. Brig, Brig would have gold healing over time if Transcendence wasn't around. Like... You'd, you, like, you need to be there. Because <laughs> even though they're not running goats, they don't even have a Reinhardt yet. If they have a Roadhog, like, your, your Reinhardt gets fucked up because you're not there to help them save them. Like, you need to be there. And you don't accomplish anything because, I mean, he just left shot away and then he climbed back up and then killed you anyway. Like, you, you can't carry as Brigida. Not in this fashion. Like, I, I would say I did carry when I climbed to GM as Brigida, but that's because I was wise old ninja master carry Brigida. I waited for the enemy to make mistakes, and I punished them for it every time. I did not make plays. In fact, I have a... I, man, this is like my favorite Brigida game, is one time on Gibraltar Defense, when I wish I like recorded it, or at least took a screenshot of my damage done, because I swear to God, I did no damage that round. I may have whipshotted someone at one point, maybe I did a bash on someone, but almost the entire game I just stood up on high ground and kept repair packing our Winston and Genji who was just cleaning up, and it was not a fair fight. The game was a bit imbalanced, but the point is, is that all I needed to do was repair pack people. It's all I needed to do was hit E. I did nothing else, because I didn't need to do anything else, and as soon as anyone would get close, I, I think at some point, I think we had to fall back from high ground, and I think I did more then. But, like, they couldn't even approach me. Like, they just kept getting destroyed. So, like, know that you don't have to do them. Like, you can wait. Wait for them to make moves. Wait for them to make mistakes. That's the strength of Brigitte, because they can't just walk on you. But if you walk on them, you're giving them the opportunity to just pummel you. And, and ultimately, you're a healer, you're a, a tank. You're not DPS. I mean, I can joke that Brigida is half tank, half support, half DPS. But she's not really, she doesn't play like a DPS. Um, you know, that's decent. Like, everything fine is here is pretty decent. Like, you could be, you could play more aggressively in these situations where it's basically a, a scuffle with a bunch of unorganized teams, like, this is where Regita shines. This is why you're doing well here, because they're not six people, and you're just pummeling the shit out of them, because they can't stop you. They can't stop you at this point. And it's great for you. But when it's a fair fight, this is when you can fail, because you don't want to take a fair fight as Brigida. <laughs> That's not the point of Brigida. You're a bully. Don't take a fair fight. You know, it's kind of like, it's like, you know, D.Va is the best example, because it's like, D.Va can absolutely destroy DPS, right? But as a DPS player, you probably should be aware of, like, sometimes you wreck D.Va, like, as, like, a Genji, you just keep throwing shurikens at her, like, right-click, 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 and you just, like, tread her mech, and then she can't do much to you, because that D.Va took a bad fight. D.Va takes smart fights, she wins. Takes bad fights, she feeds. Brigida the exact same way, except you don't have boosters to save you. When you don't have boosters, that's when you have a problem. So, you have to have the foresight, you have to be more safer. Um, it's, just, it's just critical. And like, oh, another thing. Uh, I think it actually comes up, it comes up a few times. I, the thing is, I don't think it actually costs you a lot of the time, but... Another thing about healing as Brigida in GOATS. Like, most of your repair packs should be going to Reinhardt. Like, like, the thing about goats, again, is that Reinhardt's kind of the centerpiece, and the main reason is is that, you know, one, he's the main tank, and that's, I mean, that's what he does, but, you know, goats doesn't have a lot of burst damage. There's some potential for Zenyatta, but mostly he's left-clicking, and mostly it's consistent. Um, 
you know, you don't have the same kind of, like, flashy widow just suddenly gets a headshot and the game's changed. Um, it's, it's just slow, methodical, consistent damage that doesn't lend itself to uh, flashy plays. It's, it's more of um, a brawl and more, like, you need to get every little bit you can to get the advantage. So, and that generally means is that whoever Reinhardt can hit is who you're all hitting. And because Goats is always a mirror match, it's always the enemy Reinhardt. And, oh yeah, this whole, th this whole conversation is unfortunate of not being clear on where you should be defending. Oof. But, um, you know, you fight, like, Reinhardt fights Reinhardt because Reinhardt can hit Reinhardt. Reinhardt can't hit anyone else but the enemy Reinhardt. Which then leads everyone else to want to fight the enemy Reinhardt. And that's why you do that. And I believe I may have just completely lost my train of thought. But, um... What the hell point was I getting at? Hmm. Oh, repair packs. So, like, all your DPS focus ends up being on Reinhardt because that's who all of you can hit. I mean, you'd much rather be killing the Zen, but you can't all hit the Zen. At most, only Zen can hit Zen, and that's not very useful. Maybe Zarya a little bit, maybe Diva a little bit, but not enough. Not enough to, when we're talking about goats. So you focus Reinhardt because your Reinhardt can hit, go hit the enemy Reinhardt. You can hit the enemy Reinhardt as Brigida. <laughs> that's an issue. Of, I don't know why you're swinging around point. Like you're just kind of wildly swinging. Like you should always be holding shield. Like this is the Reinhardt should be showing through. Is like you should just be holding shield, standing there. Don't wildly flail around. I, I don't know. I guess they have a Sombra. I, maybe you're spy checking. But she's probably not standing in the middle of the point. <laughs> like, she's probably not standing around in the middle of you. You just see her at that point, right? Like, Brigitte is not a great spy checker because generally your mace range only slightly ex would exceed your sight lines of seeing an enemy brig. You know? Like, that's, that's really for your diva to be doing. You can do it, sort of, if you want. But mostly, she's just not going to be that close to actually get hit by you. So, like, hold your shield up for the love of God. Because you just got, I mean, well, not this, but you, you got chunked by a fair out of nowhere because you just didn't have your shield up. Um, again, everyone's gunning for you. That's the other thing. Again, everyone wants to kill Brigida. So even though that fair could have been shooting at anyone, she shoots at you because you don't have your shield up and she wants to kill you. Everyone wants to kill you. And you're not running against a counter goats. So, like... They're not necessarily under the limitation of what I was just talking about of, like, kill the Reinhardt. Because if they're not running goats, they're running Pharaoh, they can shoot around Reinhardt. And if they can, then they will. But, goats v. goats, they're gonna be focusing Reinhardt because that's the only one that all of them can shoot. So most of your repair packs should be going to Reinhardt. And this becomes critical when shit gets real. Because we, we have to consider, even though this scrim... We're looking at a scrim, but at the same time, like, I don't know if this is a fair fight. Like, a lot of times you, you guys lose because of, like, stupid mistakes of, like, bad EMPs and stuff. Of having really, like, miscommunications of, like, just there on first point where you, like, you just had a bad, like, you didn't have a good plan there. Things got miscommunicated. I believe you end up winning this. You fold. Or not fold, but you, you hold second for a long time. Um, but, like, like, you just kind of threw first point. Because of communication issues, but like, it, like I don't, I don't know if this is like a fair fight, and they're not even necessarily running goats. But if when the shit gets real and it's like a really close goats fight, or you're basically playing people who are better than you, like you need to be on top of your game and you need to be utilizing everything at your disposal. So, like again, dragons basically came straight at you. <laughs> Everyone is gunning for you. I guess maybe I guess he's going for a runner too, but. Boy, like, they're always going to want PCU. So, like, keep in mind, like, people have, other, like, characters have certain escapes, right? Like, D.Va can boost her away. Zarya has personal bubble. So, and, and Zarya can, like, regen. She has kind of a health, self-regen of shields. If she doesn't take damage for long, her shields replenish. So she can kind of regen half her health on herself. So, you have all this AoE healing... Keep in mind that Reinhardt can't defend himself very well. Again, if Rein if the enemy Reinhardt is swinging on him, he can't stop that. It's impossible. So, most of your repair wrecks go to Reinhardt because he can't mitigate damage the same way D.Va can just boost her away. 
but the same way Zarya is personal. And if Diva and Zarya are doing the job and are playing smart, or at least decently, they're not. They're they're only going to be aggressive when they know they can get out. You know, that's just common sense. Reinhardt doesn't have this option. He's the main tank. He's supposed to be taking damage. So in almost any situation where, like Diva's low, Zarya's low, Reinhardt's low, you heal Reinhardt. Because Diva and Zarya should be smart enough to know to get the fuck out because they can't keep care of themselves. And the AoE heals are still going to exist to heal them eventually. But that's not going to be enough to save Reinhardt, who cannot mitigate enough damage. He cannot stop the enemy Reinhardt from hitting him. So most repair packs should be going to Reinhardt by default to keep him alive. And usually pretty frequently, because, again, you're kind of like the main healer. And... There could be some predictive thought of, like, holding because you know you're going to need it, maybe. But you kind of just want to almost be using enough cooldown just to keep his health topped off. Because, again, there's no real burst damage in GOATS. It's just consistent damage. So you want to be getting the most out of your heals and cooldowns as much as possible. So saving it usually isn't going to be a benefit. And the only time you really want to not use it on Reinhardt is if we're talking... If I don't heal Zarya right now, she is definitely going to die, where his Reinhardt seems pretty okay right now. Because, again, with Goats, is if someone's taking a lot of damage, odds are the, the focus has shifted. Like, um, Discord Orb has now moved to Zarya, and now they're all shooting Zarya. At that point, you probably want to heal. Like, like, looking at Discord Orbs is a good indication of when someone is going to die. Because if Zarya suddenly has a Discord, she's probably going to be in trouble. And that might be a better clue to now she definitely needs the repair pack over Reinhardt, who is not actually at critical, and maybe just a little low. Because you don't want anyone to die, you do want to save people, because again, when we talk about Brigida, she is part Zarya, and so you kind of have to have a projected level mindset. But, you know, in in a, in a in that sense, like you, you treat it like projectile, and that it's a life-saving tool, not a heal. When it's on Reinhardt, you're still healing. But if it's on anyone else, it should be treated as a life-saving tool that should only be used if it's going to save a life. Much like Zarya, you don't put bubbles on people just to, like, gain energy and be a bot. You do it because they're going to die if you don't. Because at high-level play, that's how you can you can do that with Zarya, and you'll still get energy anyway. With Rig, that's kind of why you want to play it. Um, and the reason why I'm pausing here and not just keep things going is the other thing I want to talk about with your Tracer, and I see this a lot, and... Um, could it again be tied to aggressive mindset? I don't know. Could it just be that you're a projectile player and don't really play Tracer? Because Tracer's not... Tracer's not really hit scan exactly. She's tracking. Which is slightly different. Like, And what I notice with your Tracer play... And I don't necessarily have a good idea how to fix this. Other than, again, practice and conscious thought. Is you frequently don't acquire the target before you start shooting. Like... I almost want to slow this down and keep showing it. I don't know if that's really necessary. I think you can usually see it when you're at normal speed. I don't want to belabor this point a whole bunch. But you do play Tracer a few times here, so I feel like it is probably important. Um, Tracer is a character that, you know, she does a lot of damage, but she also, like, the clip is very short and has a basically an equal reload time as it does fire speed. Like, you're just constantly reloading and shooting. And... If you can get basically an entire clip onto someone, maybe it takes a punch too, but that's like one-shot territory. And so frequently, you will get someone, you'll get someone like, I'm going to go shoot Ana, and the cursor will be near them, and you'll pull, you'll, put, you'll push the mouse button, pull the trigger, not quite on them. And the thing with, like, right there, you, that was good. That one was good. Fair wasn't too bad. The Mercy wasn't too bad. Like, it's not like it's every time. These these ones are really cleaning up, and you know, you're getting a lot of hits. But in other situations, like, kind of like that there, you completely lost track of the ball. Like, that's kind of a better example I'm talking about. Where you pull the trigger without the cursor on them. And because Tracer is tracking, when you start shooting before the cursor is on them, this means you start missing. So you miss a few shots. And then you try to acquire the target later. But since you're trying to track, it becomes difficult to get the track later without, like, overcompensating or track missing. Because you're, cause you're, like, trying to match the speed, but since you missed initially, you're, like, just missing. <laughs> you're just going to keep missing because you, you have to 
track f you have to like push now the cursor farther than what you normally would because you're it just throws you off and like right there like you're just missing most of the time and it's it's just really sloppy shooting some of the time like sometimes it's fine like you know but when you miss you miss bad and you don't want that and you boop shit right there that's not a problem but, like, right there, I think he started shooting before Reinhardt really had him on top. So I'm sure most of the shots actually hit him there, but he's huge, so that's not much, that's not very impressive. This is an issue on another map, too, so I would definitely be a lot more co conscious about acquiring that target first and foremost before you start shooting. Um, it's, it's just kind of an eagerness of, I gotta shoot. And I don't remember if it was in this round or another round, but I just remember at one point... I think it might have been actually here while I was talking, but where it seemed very clear, like I think it was with Ball, where you end up like like ninety degrees away from him, like you like you're not even close to him because he like hooks something and he's getting really far away, and it's like while you're reloading, you're like ninety degree away from him, and then you're very clearly just holding down the mouse button when you're reloading, and then you immediately start shooting even though you're 90 degrees off, off sight lines of, and then you try, like, try and snap back, and it's like, you waste half the clip <laughs> doing that. And, yeah, I could, like, find the moment, but it doesn't matter, because it's like, don't... don't waste so many shots on Tracer. Like, you, you don't... Like, it's almost... it's very easy to do, because you've got so many... like, you're just constantly shooting and reloading, but... Tracer is so powerful if you just dead on someone, where you just carefully beeline for them, like just get that perfect one clip in and punch. So powerful, so much damage potential. And if you're just flailing around and missing shots, like you're just throwing that out the window for this like generic damage. You're, you're just putting so much value of. That tracer's key. I, I don't know how the hell they hit you here. How did Hanzo hit you there? <laughs> what, like you, stupid tree trunk. I don't know how it hit you. Or was he over there? I don't know. It's so weird. Unluckers. But um, like, you don't want to afford to put any damage on the table, with tracer. And, like, it's better to just not shoot at that point, because you know, like, fundamental concept of like DPS, like the strength of DPS, isn't. The strength of DPS isn't that they do a lot of damage, it's that they do burst damage. Like, when we go back to GOATS, when I was talking about with GOATS, GOATS doesn't do burst damage very well, they do consistent damage. And it is really strong because they can maintain the level of, like, they can just stay in the fight so long as they have so much health and so much healing. Like, it works because of all the life-saving abilities they have, and health, and all that bullshit. But burst damage is tremendously powerful in this game, and in normal circumstances outside of this goat, goat's bullshit that's taken over is the way to go. Like, that's why you do the melee finishers and stuff. Like, that's why that shit's important, because that extra burst damage is so critical to getting kills. And if you're not getting, like, these full clips of Tracer, you're, you're not getting the burst damage, because, like, bur Tracer is this constant burst damage. It's just constant burst damage. But she just reloads a lot. And you need to get that full benefit. It, it's not as simple as a rocket or like a you know soldier helix, which is still a rocket, but it's not it's not as easy to do. Obviously, you know. I don't realize I'm saying like get get good aim for it, but it's just a matter of you can't aff really afford to waste shots the way you can on other like projectile heroes. Like it's just a very different beast. Um. This is something to really keep in mind of just being a little bit more careful about how you shoot. And it's okay to take that extra nanosecond to kind of acquire that target and then start shooting. The benefits far outweigh the potential loss of not getting a few more shots in. Because you can just end up deleting people entirely. Um, it's just so good. Uh, d -d 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 I don't, don't remember if there's anything else I wanted to say about New Bunny. At least in the attack phase. The attack phase is pretty strong. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's anything I wanted to say on deck, because you pretty much sail through. I feel like there's something on second point. 
was it? I think it was something here. Let me, let me just watch this, because I, I feel like there was something you... Because I think, cause I think you pull Blade and you uh, once again don't have the targets acquired, and you kind of waste it. But it might have been... Like, we get Nano Blade, right? You know, Nano Blade... Yeah, th they're gone. They're not here. <laughs> like... Um, let's see, you don't fall for it this time. But, yeah, you basically did nothing with Nano Blade. So... That was a weird one, because honestly, when I saw that, I kind of was like, where did they go to? <laughs> so I don't... I don't completely blame you for that. But... Um... It still fucked it up. <laughs> like, it could be as reasonable as you want it, but obviously they were not where you thought they were, and it ends up costing you basically. You like, you didn't need Nanoblade there because you beat him anyway. Like, you killed Genji, but so what? Like, you, you cleaned them up anyway just because they were staggered. You basically just ooga boo them to be separated with, with the alt, and you were able to pick them off. Which, okay but not necessarily useful. And this is like, okay, again, aggressive playmaker. Like, you are now super far into this shit. You're so, like, and you're not even, like, wanting to get out. Maybe it's because you know you're fucked. <laughs> you know you can't just walk out of that. But it's like, you got super aggressive there. And maybe it's the fault of your tanks not following you up, but, you know, main tank's supposed to go in first, right? <laughs> like, Winston's supposed to go in first and you follow him. That's That's how we play this. Um, it, it's it's a matter of like being aggressive and being having this playmaker mindset of I need to go in and kill everybody right now. Do you? Got you killed. I mean, it distracted them. I, I mean, you could argue that it did win the fight because because you won it. You could easily make that argument. Wouldn't necessarily be wrong either, but I feel like if you just let Winston jump on him and then you dash into him and right clicked him. You just would have won all the easier, and you wouldn't have dead at the end. And you wouldn't have to feel the need to go on the ball, which actually, on that, in that particular case, I don't think you should have won on the ball, because you had, like, th you have, like, two or three minutes on the clock, and you were halfway to nano, or halfway to blade. Um, I mean, you do get blade really fast. You, I mean, you can, your Genji actually is good, but... Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know how effective ball would have been. Like, Genji's also really fast. Like, ball's faster, but I feel like if that became a protracted fight, you would have gotten Blade mid-fight and cleaned it up. More likely than Ball would have cleaned it up. Um, in that particular instance. Just because you have time on the clock. Because if it didn't happen, you just would get Blade the next fight and then win, probably. Um, rather than having to wait probably two fights instead, if it didn't work out. And I feel like as long as your team didn't immediately die, you'd get back with Genji and, and be just fine. Because Genji's just not that slow. Um, oh yeah, there was the issue of, like, oh yeah, I remember once, because we were talking about Ferris all before. Um, so you're, you're playing the style. This is fine. Um, you got the bunker, you're playing basically split. You kind of get the strength, you, you get that, no, no, that's great. Monkey, so yeah, this is, this is an important instance. So you have Barrage, Monkey's in the back line, you don't know where he went. So you're looking for him. Where did the monkey go? No one knows. Now this is there's a there's a big scouting error, and you're actually wait actually I want to watch this very carefully because I'm not even sure. Genji's right there. We know Genji's over there. Where's the rest of the team? Winston's there. Is their whole team in there? Mercy Monkey. Where's Diva? Okay, Diva was not with them. Okay, that's honestly what I wanted to know. So this is talking about how barrage works, in general, and what you want to use it for. So this is, again carry mindset is not great because we talk about what what is what is barrage good for like is is barrage a win condition let's put it this way is barrage a win condition what is a win condition what does it even mean and what does it matter so like anything is technically a win condition in the smallest sense of like shoot kill an enemy team duh win condition right like get a pick like anytime you're shooting rockets technically you're trying to achieve a win condition of just getting a pick but that's useless and it's always there so like when usually when you're talking about wind conditions you mean like big wind conditions ones that are practically guaranteed like uh grav dragons nano blade things that usually work like 90 percent of the time unless they need a counter ultimate or the enemy team just gets really lucky or you really fuck up um they're usually pretty solid conditions 
that usually by themselves work. Barrage is not that, because Barrage frequently gets you killed. If it has a combo to it, like a Grav or a DMP, it can be a win condition. But it, it's also just an ult that gets you killed, and I would consider it more of a throwaway ultimate, especially if we're talking about competitive ladder, where you're probably just not going to have any kind of like good combos with this. Um, or, or the organization really pull them off some of the time. You would hope in Master and GM they would figure this straight out, but you'd be surprised. So, Barrage should frequently be used more as a throwaway ultimate. You know, it's the exact opposite of a Blade. Blade is almost always a win condition because it's so powerful. Fair ult is not. It's the opposite. You should throw it away immediately in the first chance you get when you can reasonably be assured that you will not die and probably kill someone, even if you could kill that person without it. So, we, ta we go back to... That should be good. Yeah, we go back to like where the Winston was. So I think like I think after this fight, you were kind of on the impression they were all here, but clearly Genji was over there and Diva comes in from this direction too. So only the Winston and the Mercy are here. Now, maybe Mercy can retreat. But if you can actually get into like the doorway, more or less, you can probably just kill Winston right away with with, with your barrage. Like just immediately delete Winston. And if you do that, you win the fight. Because they've lost the main tank. They've just immediately lost. Like, okay, they, you know, they might still have their own win condition, you know, they have their own shit, but the fight's not even started yet, so obviously they're just going to regroup. And, and especially since Mercy's going to be screwed, like, she'll probably just try to go for the res, because what else she's going to do, and you'll just shoot her and kill her. That's assuming she even since arrived at the barrage. Like, as soon as you saw Winston there, that should have been an instant, like, I'm just going to barrage this motherfucker and kill him. Because cause even, like, what are you going to do to Winston, right? Because your whole team is over on the other side. They can't help you. Winston has way too much health to burn down. He has Leap. If Mercy's not here and he just escapes, he's going to escape. You're not going to kill him unless you barrage. So what the hell are you saving a barrage for? Just just solo ult him. And it could tilt him, too. That's like an added benefit. <laughs> People are like, lol, got soul ulted. No, that's... Like, solo alt with barrage. Definitely. If, if you can get a barrage in that, that guarantees at least one kill and does not kill you, worth it every single time, as long as it's not at a part where you already won the fight. And since this is a new fight, 6v6, you immediately delete Winston, 1,000% worth it. You hesitate, D.Va comes in now, like, D.Va wasn't there to save him. And now you're basically by yourself. You're barely surviving the pit. Actually, you don't survive the pit. You get killed by Mercy, who ulted. And I, I think you end up losing this, at least in the long run. I don't remember. But it's like, you don't need to save Brian. In fact, you even... I think you had to have their shit. What, what is your team? Like, do you have anything to combo with Barrage? I guess you have Amp, technically, which would be hard to actually pull off. You have Bongo, but... Um... So, like, right there, you could have immediately deleted Mercy. Which, it's still a little risky, because, you know, D.Va might kill you. And now you go for the D.Va. Like, you go straight at the D.Va. D.Va's your only threat. Well, mostly. She's the one who's m the biggest threat, so you could have immediately killed Mercy right there. But instead, you hold it because you want the bigger play. You hold it when you see the, both tanks and Mercy, and you're like, I'm going to get all three of them. Fuck getting all three. Just kill the Mercy. If you can kill one person and survive, it's the best feral you'll ever have in your life. Definitely. The entire risk of Pharaoh's ultimate is that it's going to kill you. So if it doesn't kill you and you get one kill, it's totally worth it. Thousand percent. Thousand percent worth it. And, you know, I... I I feel like we're mostly done here. Like, I mean, obviously there's a shit ton of videos. Actually, wait a minute. No, there's no one more thing. I just remembered. Um, so, you know, big issues remain. Um, there's actually a time, I don't remember when you do it, but you do play Baptiste at some point. And I think you even comment that <laughs> everything seems like it's going better when you're playing Baptiste. And it's because you're playing Baptiste better than you're playing Brig. <laughs> like, because when you're playing Baptiste, you can be far away, you can shoot, and you can heal better. Like... You don't have the positioning issues of playing too aggressively as Baptiste. 
Although it actually does happen. Like, was it on Volskaya? Wait, no, we just did Volskaya. Oh, maybe it's the second scrim. It might have been the second scrim. Because I think you, even, there's even a point where you... It's the second point, you're on defense, and you take the top left, uh, and you start, like, shooting out the window. But you do it so late that the, that the enemy team is already, like, back at the choke. And they start pushing you. Like, Diva... A Diva or someone, like, boosts in and starts pushing you out, and you have to throw down an immortality field just to make sure you don't die. And it's like, that's such a waste. It's like you got aggressive for basically no reason, because it's like, why are you doing that? You're not going to kill anyone. You're Baptiste. He does decent damage, but you're not going to kill anyone. There's no way. You know, don't... And you're on defense. Of course, at that point, I, I think you guys were under the impression you were like, the way better team, which, I mean, you, I think you did win most of the matches. Um, I think you were kind of memeing at that point anyway, so it wasn't like try-hard mode, but... It it does kind of fit with you know the themes of just being unnecessarily over aggressive. Definitely don't want to do it. Don't definitely don't want to do it in a, a main support, and definitely don't want to do it on defense. It's like a double whammy. But the other thing I wanted to definitely cover was May. Who is my Bay? Oh, there's just a lot of pause for with this. Okay, so, we're running Snotes. The goal of Snotes, while I'm off, which we know. I'm mostly just long for time. I don't feel like trying to find the better moment in the video. So, I guess, I guess the critical thing we're going to see here is um, understanding, like, one, positioning, and two, um, the target you should actually be focusing on. So, we get a pretty good wall here. Like, you walled off the enemy team pretty successfully. Reinhardt and D.Va are by themselves. Like, we got D.Va effectively isolated. She's almost dead. She's at half. We have gone to the point, though, and this is kind of like a problem. You have split from your team entirely. Like, there's actually several things that go wrong here. Why don't you split from your team entirely? Uh, now you're on point with Reinhardt. D.Va manages to boost away. Um, and now, like, your whole team... I don't know. They, actually, did they just go around the wall? I think they just went around the wall. Interesting. Wait a minute. We may need to reflect on this a little bit. Let's look at this again. I think they went around the wall. It sort of changes things a little bit here. Like, well, for one thing, okay, your Reinhardt needs to immediately charge when this happens. Actually, I, maybe he didn't have it. Did he actually waste it outside of spawn? It's possible he didn't have charge here. But ideally, he needs to pin people up against this wall. Like, immediately on this wall, block them off. You needed to kill them. Two, like, there's an issue of target selection. So, like, the team is not focused on one target. And apparently we have a bounty of what could have been targeted because it's because they do end up going I can see them right there they can they do end up going around the wall now the issue I believe is is that most of most of the team is still focusing on Reinhardt I don't know like there's there's calls for diva there's calls for this like your brig like you're trying to fight like these everyone here is trying to fight Reinhardt because he's in front you're trying to go past the Reinhardt and kill diva which kind of makes sense, but I, actually, you know, the issue is, is again, you're too over-eager. Like, you're pushing forward because you want to kill this D.Va. You want to demack the D.Va because you think she's the weakest, and kind of you're right. Again, if, if the wall had been super successful and the entire team was blocked off, D.Va's the smart call. Because you could... But the thing is, you could freeze D.Va. Like, this is kind of the issue. You're going for right clicks, you're going for damage. But you have a Zen, you have Reinhardt, you have all this shit... Mace damage is actually pretty shit. Like, she's... Like, I always say she is, like, the lowest DPS in the game. I don't think that's actually entirely accurate. But I feel like she is the lowest DPS of the DPS characters. Um, she's only good DPS if you're getting, like, 100% headshots, which is not going to happen. Somewhat doable on at least Diva's giant head, but still not likely. And 
the power of May is going to be freezing people. So you're like trying to go around here and get right clicks. You want to be spraying and praying and trying to freeze people to set up Zenyatta to Discord and just headshot people and delete them. Zen is actually going to do more damage than you, the DPS character, as a support. Easily. And you're also setting up Reinhardt to maybe just pin someone who's frozen. You're setting up flame strikes. You're setting up easy shots. You're setting up Lucio. Like, you know Lucio does a shitload of damage, right, if he gets none of his headshots. I believe four webs from his gun is nearly 200 damage. Or at least four webs plus a punch. Or, or four webs and a boop and a punch. I don't know what the hell it is, but it's pretty close. It's at least like 150. I don't know. It's a shitload of damage if he gets four consistent headshots. And if you freeze someone, he can do that. Like, you have plenty of damage here to, to follow up on anyone you freeze. Go freeze him. And, and once again, in general, this is like Brigitte shit. Like, where are you compared to your team? Like, Reinhardt's over here now because he gets boosted back by the Reinhardt. You were out in point. Your team gets killed because, I mean, you don't have the D.Va. You have a Brig still, but you don't have a D.Va. You, you lose, like the people that make sure that you can't get pushed and your team ends up dying for it like sure as may you're not super defensive you're not super tanky but you know if the enemy team starts pushing your team and you're just spraying at all of them they're gonna get fucked up well it's a decent amount of damage if you're piercing multiple people but also it's gonna freeze them and they all die but your team dies mostly because you get too eager to push in and get over aggressive because, I mean, like, the wall is mostly successful in terms of its positioning. It did single out two of other players. But you basically get out of position also. Like, it's like, you're out of position? Well, I'm going to be out of position. So you don't get no value out of it. Your team gets pushed. Um, it's a bit of a mess, because it still feels like you should have won that. But at the same time, like, May is a problematic character. I actually say May's not a very good character. Like, I love May, but I she's not very good. <laughs> like, she has a lot of issues. Um, low damage, and it's all about getting those walls. And so now we're playing it here, and we have a big... Like, you guys can't get through this choke for the longest time. It's a, it's a disaster. Um, and, you know, the solution is just not to go through this choke. Like, you, you know there's a right path. I know you do. Because when you guys finally do get past the choke, you know the enemy team's doing it. So there's there's two paths here, and you keep going through this one choke point, and you can't wall them off. Like they're being very smart in how they're playing. They know that you're going for the wall, and so Reinhardt's not giving you the opportunity, and he keeps just charging into yours as soon as he sees you. And by that point, and it usually succeeds. Like, and you guys keep walking into this too. Like. If you guys just went right, you'll have a better angle to wall them off, because they won't be able to do this charge yet. In fact, you could just go straight to point if, if they didn't, like, push you. Because you, you could just keep going in that direction and go to point. Um, it's just so much time wasted. Like, just, just go right. You get a better angle for the wall. It's all about the... Like, May is all about the wall. If you're not getting good walls, you shouldn't be on May. And arguably your walls could be better. It's just a matter of, like, they're playing pretty smart. We're at Master at this point. Like, they're not dummies. It's kind of impressive. I, I, yeah, honestly, they're playing around the wall really, really well. But, like, like, that's perfect. He needs to be pinned. He's not pinned. Why is he not pinned? He should have been immediately pinned. Like, that cost you this fight, easily. He, he, enemy, if, if Reiner gets singled out, he, he needs to be pinned up against your wall immediately. 300 damage, he's dead. 300 damage from a pin, 100 from a flame strike, 75 from a hammer, he has 25 HP, he's dead. Like, to kill him. We put a Discord on him, then he's, he's dead instantly from just, just Reinhardt alone. Like, no excuse for that not to happen. And, and again, you're, you're playing the May, so it's not like it's your fault necessarily, but... Like, that needs to be communicated. Like, if you wall anyone off, pin that motherfucker to it. No hesitation. Because what are they, what is he going to do? Even if you miss, what is he going to do? That's where you want to be, because cause the other, cause the enemy team is on the other side of that wall, and as soon as it goes down, they're now all in hammer range of Reinhardt. Swing away. <laughs> Swing into all of them for 75 damage. Worst case scenario, you like, you end up dying anyway. But hey, at least you would have got an Earth Shatter immediately. Like, um, 
like, wall placements could have been slightly better. It's not critical, it's just a matter of, like, realize that, like, when you're at the choke, you can't get the angle. Realize that Reinhardt needs to be on top of that choke the pin. Um, because if, if this shit's not working out, you need this to switch off May. And, and, you know, utilize, especially against, like, a Goat's Comp, utilize the left click. You're not damage as May. You're just not damage. You're, you're CC. Your crowd control. Like, pierce, like, f freeze them and pierce them. Because even in terms of damage, if you're piercing, like, I think it's 65 damage a second, I think, the, the freeze is. And you're doing 75 a body shot with right click. Like, sure, I can headshot, but, like, if you're hitting, if you're piercing two people, you know, you're doing more damage than a body shot. Easily. Like, I'm not even sure the DPS of right click, because I'm not sure how long it takes to cast. Like, it's it's 75 a shot, but I'm not sure how long it takes to fire a shot. I think it is longer than one second. So it's even worse than, like, it's, oof. Like, the left click is actually more damage if you're hitting more than one person, for sure. And, um... Well, just be using that, because if you freeze anyone in goats, like, they're in trouble. Another thing I want to point out here is, like, again, the positioning is fairly aggressive, but they're not running anything that's dangerous. It's pretty okay here, because they're, they're running goats, basically. They're floats. Um, the thing I want to point out is what just happened right there. You, you, you throw projection... Uh, I did it again. I forgot what it's called. Concussion. You throw concussion missile a lot over here to try and boop them off, but you can't boop them off here. Like... Hey, let's, let's, we still have this, let's bring this back. So, you're hitting the wall here, right? Like, what, what is really the radius of this? Like, I don't know, it's like 9 meters or something? Like, it is basically this, right? Like, it'll hit anyone here. The problem is it's not going to send them far enough away from this to actually go off the ledge. Like, even if they were, like, right here, the farthest distance from it, I don't think this is enough to actually put them off the ledge. They'd have to be you know, walking over here, and you'd have to put it down here to actually accomplish this. And you're, you're not even not, you're hitting the wall. Like, this is super unlikely to get a boop into this pit. Super unlikely. Like, not even, again, percentage chance of anything succeeding. It's not gonna work. And even then, they might hit this rock. Like, man, like, you gotta be useful, because when you, when you don't have it, there's opportunities here. You could use it. Like, if you fired it right here, right now, this area might get launched in the pit right now. Like, that'd probably kill... She might hit this. It's actually really hard to see with this. Um, it's kind of a little hard to see here, but that's more useful. And, of course, having it to escape right there, too. When you're just throwing it away, you're kind of throwing away options that you could have had. Now, you did have it in time to try different things, to have it to escape... But, and actually, that's another, that's another, there was another instance of being too aggressive, like, play around this pillar. There's too many people alive on their team. Like, you're frontlining in as Pharaoh. You live, sure, it was close. It was very, very close. You had point control, keep point control. That's your, that's your goal, is to not die once you have point control. Job number one is don't die. Job two is to get kills, to make sure you don't die, because there's less of them. Once again, you use boop, and you're not going to boop anyone off. See? Like, you just... Like you get rockets into them, you do damage, but... Right here is a potential for boop. Like, now you're in boop territory. Like, right there, boop. Oh, there we go. We got it. Diva actually... She had boost, but still... Ah, she got hacked, huh? <laughs> that got her. That's funny. But... Don't waste boo. It's such a lifesaver. You never know when you're going to need it. You never know when you might have a better opportunity. Um, just don't throw that shit. And then you used it too early. Like, you want it for when they're on the bridge. Once you've already used it, they know they didn't safely cross the bridge. That one was a little bit better because most of them already crossed it and you might have been able to get the bridge there. It was close. But at the same time, you didn't have it to defend yourself and you ended up dying. But, you know what? I kind of give that one because I think that was just more likely to get the brig. Actually, wait, no, because they had mines there, right? Wait, yeah, wait, fuck. I shouldn't give you credit for these things. 
Which is rude, but yeah, like, yeah, they had... You had the mines there, so yeah, Brigida was just... Nothing she could do. Leave her there. You go for that boop. Again, wrong side. If you had it on the other side, you might have been able to get him off. But you go barrage, you get Lucio. Once again, like, another issue is, like, you're too low to the ground. A lot of times, like, this is, like, pretty aggressive positioning. Like, why are you so low to the ground? Like, I know you're, like, losing altitude and shit. And that's more, like, pay more attention to that. Because, again, Ferrix should be able to fly infinity if you're, if you're keeping up with the correct rhythm and boosting when you get to the red bar here. Um, you're not focusing on that. Like, the skybox in this map is huge. Like, you can get really high. There's, and I know when you barrage close together... Oh, you get hacked. It doesn't matter. Never mind. You got hacked. So, I, I know when you get... Like, if you're close to barrage, you, you're more likely to get kills, but... You don't want to be in shield bash range. That's... That's too close. That's too close. If, if you're going to be bashed, you're a little too close. Like, be above them. You know, you're in tickle range of Winston. You're, you're, you're taking unnecessary damage because you're just playing too close, too low to the ground. This is where you should be. <laughs> you know... Actually, not, necessarily, not even necessarily this far away, but, you know, get high. Yes, this is what you want. Get high. Get these shots in. Get... I mean, it's a little bit trickier than this. They are playing a, uh, a pretty divey comp at this point. But, you know, once you start focusing... Like, once the ball starts working, and now he's kind of forced him into this area, yeah. But you don't even need to be in the window there, right? It helps, sort of, just to keep you consistent. But... You know, you can be farther away from the window and have the exact same angle, so you don't get whip shot. And again, you're barraging on the ground, <laughs> like this keeps happening. It's just too, it's just too aggressive trying to get these big plays. And it's not easy. I feel like I'm, I, I am definitely repeating myself at this point. I, I we were definitely wrapped up. I just wanted to make sure I got the May thing in there. Um. You just gotta get those good balls. You gotta communicate with your team of, like, get those pins in, follow up on them immediately, use your freeze more, definitely. Uh, Versus goats, definitely use your freeze more. The CC is more valuable. Um, I think we're gonna wrap this up here. We've gone long enough. Um, it's just more of the same break issues. Uh, I don't think there's really anything in the second scrim that I needed, if I felt like I needed to mention. Um, so, yeah, we're gonna wrap it up there. I hope this helped. You know, it is a little tricky when we're talking about ranking up of like, like, cause, cause, yeah, obviously aggression's gonna pay off a lot of the time. Like, that's that's the trick of it, because it's it. The, the, you're gonna have to try and figure out when you want to play aggressive and when you don't. And I think s smarter bets are, you know, if you're on defense, play safer. If you know, consider the odds of success any time and be like, if I can't, if, if, if the odds of success of this fight paying off, like, why am I taking it? You know, risk versus reward. Take percentage chances that are more favorable to you, it's going to work out better. Because, like, I, I feel like you're, you're almost trying to overcompensate for mechanics, but what's funny is, is your mechanics are good. <laughs> because when you, you know, when you get close with Farah, it's like, you don't trust that you can aim at a distance. That's what that tells me. Like, I need to get closer because I don't think I can hit him that far away. Why can't you run him far away? Your aim's not bad. Like, yeah, it's more difficult to hit him far away. That's a given, but... So? <laughs> like, is it even critical that you get these hits right now? Like, you know, win conditions, you know, it, team effort, etc., etc. Like... If you hold the point, it doesn't matter whether or not it's just like you hold. Like, the only thing that matters is you hold the point, especially on certain maps. Like that map, it must be a little trickier because there's no real good cover. Like that's definitely a different beast than when we're talking about Oasis Gardens because you are pretty much out in the open, and things would be very different if they had like a Widowmaker and and you were in more danger. But when you have opportunities to basically be on point and basically be behind a wall and you can just keep peeking them and firing rockets and not really having to take a fight do that because why not oh yeah there is this massive communication issue here too like you just i don't know what the hell's going on not really important it's team stuff but um yeah definitely definitely start checking your aggression more and seeing how it works out for you um in competitive it might there might be times where it, it feels like it doesn't 
Yeah, this, this is not like you're by yourself. Like you're, this is aggression, man. Come on, like you shouldn't be by your like you know it's not goats but it's floats it's still the same idea you need to be with the team because if if the enemy was all up there they just push you and kill you <laughs> like you just you would just die you can you end up dying anyway like you can't you're not a one man army despite what the forums say but um yeah so um, it, it's entirely possible that you could play a competitive game play more passively and find that you're like don't feel like you're getting a lot of value. Um, sometimes it be that way. Sometimes it really do. Um, that is the nightmare that is competitive. However, at the same token, you may find that you have good teams that are, um, going to help, you know, going to be cooperative, going to play the game correctly, you know, tanks that tank, heals that heal, and if you play with them, you'll get a bigger advantage. And as I said before, I think as you climb up, it becomes easier for that to happen, like, more likely that to happen. For you to actually get decent players and decent teams that are more cooperative. I mean, you might not get decent compositions that work together, because people are one-tricking, they're doing whatever they want. You, you have people who, like, literally no one knows how to main tank, so either you don't get a main tank, or the person playing main tank doesn't know what the hell they're doing. Um, that's certainly likely to happen. But... I think it's better as you climb. I think being a team player is going to be a benefit, especially as Brig. Like, like what I'm saying with Brig is definitely like universal. Like this is just this is why I'm more like <laughs> quote unquote angry about how you're playing Brig. It's just that it's it's wrong regardless. Like you can't play Brig carrying like this. Um, it wouldn't work in regardless. When you're playing Genji, the way you're playing Genji or Pharah, like the way you're playing Pharah, like it can kind of work more because sometimes you can just win a fight because you. You carry, you like you are carried. You you popped off and you won. Um, definitely easier to do at lower ranks, but you know this is like when you start getting to like like you say you want to hit GM. I've seen a GM McCree. Let me fucking tell you, you can't play into that as an aggressive arrow. You will lose badly. Um, you have to take that fight very smart. Like um, we're talking about DPS matchups. Shit gets real at GM. Or actually. Um, actually, I should rephrase this. Like, I say GM, but, like, um, GM can actually be really weird in terms of how the ranks stack up. Like, when I actually think of the McCree I'm thinking of, he was 4.2k. So I, I only got the low master. I got, I think I was, like, 4.1. But once you hit high master, you actually start getting GMs in your games, and the ranking get really weird from times the way you're playing and how it works. So what will very frequently happen is you'll get, you'll be in high masters and you'll get like a, a 4.2 get later character. Cause yeah, the game I was playing was, I wasn't even GM yet, it was, it was master. And it was a 4.2 player McCree DPS main. I, I, he kicked my ass when I was playing Brig. He just like, just headshotted me like crazy. Like, Farrah be a shooting gallery for that guy. Like, you have to play smarter. And you could say, well, mechanics better, but it's a matter of better positioning. It's a matter of smarter play. Like, that's what's going to pay off in the long run, and you need to start getting used to that kind of thinking now. Because um, if you try and with a carry mindset against that kind of DPS player, he is going to take the fights that, like, he, he's going to beat you because he has a, I mean, he's, he's the better matchup. And he's going to dominate you if you're not playing smart. And, you know, you might argue, well, I, hey, if it was a McCree, I am going to play smarter. But... I mean, you should always be playing smarter. <laughs> like, it's part of habit. It's part of, like... <laughs> oh my god, this Lucio. How does no one kill him? <laughs> I forgot about this. But, um... You know, it's... You could say that, but at the same time, there there is definitely a pattern of aggression in basically all of your play that I've noticed. Um, I feel that's inherent. And curtailing it would be good. So I'm, I'm gonna call it there, finally. My reign is over. I hope this helped. Um, I think it'll at least help with your scrims, at the very least, to be kind of a more team-focused player. Um, competitive is going to be a tricky mess. It may work out. Good luck.